Okay, now, can we generalize this? Can we see, like, what's happening here in general terms? So, now what I want you to do is, um, this was just our particular example before. Let's generalize. Generalizing multiplication, that's what we're trying to understand. Multiplication in mod arg form. Because we already know how to multiply in um, x plus i, y form. It's just, you know, arithmetic. How do we do it here? Okay. Well, if I've got two complex numbers, okay, two complex numbers, any complex numbers, right? They're going to have different moduli and different arguments. I assume if they're different numbers, okay. So let's call the moduli uh, R1 and R2, okay. Now. I could call the arguments theta1 and theta2, but it's you're going to start getting overwhelmed in subscripts, okay? So instead, I'm going to choose another name for an angle, pair of angles that you guys are quite familiar with, namely alpha. Oops, sorry. I'll just start that one again. <laughs> alpha for the, our first complex number, and what would you like to suggest for our next one? Omega. How about beta? Beta. Omega. How about beta? Okay, so we've got lots to choose from, but I think this will get the one two nature of what's going on. Right? Yeah. Now, if this are, these are what Z1 and Z2 are, right? What happens when we multiply? What happens when we multiply? Now, I'm going to take that x plus i, y approach. I'm just going to do the arithmetic on it, right? I know they look messy, but I'm just going to multiply the first one all the way by the second one. Okay. Now the first immediate thing you see is what happens to the moduli? You, multiply. you just multiply them. You just get R1 and R2 just hanging out the front, doing their thing. No big deal. Okay. What happens in um, this messy stuff with all the trig functions? Okay. Now it looks bad, but if you stay with it, it's going to come good. Watch, right? Let's just do the pairs. First, cos alpha, we'll multiply it by both terms. I get cos alpha, cos beta. Then I get i cos alpha sine beta. Okay with that? Um, by convention, I'm putting my i's so out the front and I'm putting the angles, I'm making the angles the order of my trig functions. Okay. Then I'll do my second pair, right? So I've got i sine alpha cos beta. That's these two guys here. And then I'll get i sine alpha times i sine beta. That's i squared sine alpha sine beta. Okay, now I want you to again call back to this morning and I said we're drawing together lots of strands, right? What strand of mathematics is screaming out to you from this line? Trig functions. This is trig functions and in particular trig expansions, right? Have a look at the pairings. Um, let's remember that this is going to be a minus one, right? So which term is this going to pair up with? The first one. In the first one, cos alpha cos beta effectively minus sine alpha sine beta. You see it there? And then in the middle here, once you take out your factor of i, you've got cos alpha sine beta, sine alpha cos beta. Okay? So what are our, let's reverse the expansions, right? I've got my r1, r2 out the front here. So what's cos alpha cos beta take away sine alpha sine beta? Which trick expansion is that? That's cos, isn't it? Cos is the one which has this, the cos, cos, sine, sine, okay? It's cos, now don't forget, it's, it's, yeah, good. So cos is the one which flips around the sines. So you've got alpha plus beta here, don't you? Okay, right with that? Now the next bit, first I take out my factor of i, and then what trig expansion gives me the red pair? It's sine, isn't it? Sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, now... That's really amazing. It boils down so simple. What have we got here? If I multiply, wrong color. If I multiply complex numbers, Z1, Z2, in mod arg form, things happen through the moduli and things happen to the arguments, right? Um, I swear this is just the cosmic coincidence of the English language and the words we've chosen, but when you multiply complex numbers, what do you do with the moduli? Multiply. Multiply the moduli. Okay, that's the first thing you do, right? Because look, they just come out the front, 
and you don't need to deal with them anymore, right? The modulus of our product is the product of the moduli, right? That's kind of neat, okay? What do we do with the argument? Add the you argument. You just add them, right? You multiply the moduli and you add the arguments. Alliteration. Okay? Acid. Now, you know me, I love to try and like, like square peg into a round hole, squeeze alliteration into everything, but I didn't have anything to do with this, okay? This is just the way it is. Now, please, please, please note, okay? This is not just some random coincidence, right? We actually do quite a bit of work to get there. We had to use some trig identities in here. We had to match up the real and imaginary components. But this beautiful result pops out, okay? And now you can see why this was an appropriate time to introduce radians. Angles and rotation are built into the fabric of complex numbers in a way that they are not for real numbers, okay? Because real numbers are all in a line. No wonder there are no angles happening, right? They're all zero, okay? Whereas here, you have interesting stuff happening, okay? Now, can you see why? Why this happened? Why did the one stay one? Why did it stay one? Because um, the, the, the modulus all the way around was one. Why is that? Okay, I, I'm rotating around the same circle because the modulus of what I'm multiplying by What's the modulus of i? It's 1, isn't it? That's the modulus. That's how far away I am, right? So the modulus is 1. So no wonder I keep on staying the same distance around, okay? But then what happens to the angles, right? We go, we add. We go 0, pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2. If I kept going, I'd get 2 pi, which is 0, okay? So you can see this pattern happening here, okay?